Mr. Garlich von Essen, Secretary General of the European Seed Association. Mr. von Essen? No. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank ISF, and in particular President Tim Johnson and Secretary General Marcel Reutz for the invitation. And no, I'm not going to dance. So instead, what I'm going to do, I've been asked to do, is to tell you a story. The Neolik Saga. It's a story from Europe, but maybe a story that holds some lessons for all of us. For any story, you first need to set the scene, set the stage, a stage like this. At the late 2008-2009, all of us been witness to new reports coming out, the Bedington report, the perfect storm, the future of farming, that all seem to suggest that agriculture was heading in a new direction that we were looking forward to now feed 10 billion people in the year 2050 and those, those challenges that there would need to be met by a sustainable intensification of agriculture. We all, I think, in particular in the seed industry, felt this is our moment, finally. There's a realization of what we contribute. And our first thought was technologies and innovation they are the solution to meet those challenges. That's what we saw as our mission. But that's not what everybody saw. Many people saw this quite differently. They suddenly realized that agriculture would become a normal sector of the economy, driven by the same factors, by prices, by growth, by international trade. And that we would move away from the old European model of subsidizing agriculture, subsidizing an old-fashioned way of farming, subsidizing income, that we would move forward to markets so that policies and politicians would become maybe a bit less influential in our future. And that, all of that based on technologies was perceived as a threat rather than as a solution. Any good story needs a storyline. Our storyline was modernization. New opportunities, new technologies, and I've just listed a few here that many of you are familiar with. They are being discussed not only in Europe, but worldwide. We saw science to drive food security, and our application of science in our daily work as breeders and as farmers. But you can also rewrite that storyline. Many of our opponents looked at it quite differently. They saw the monopolization of food, huge international corporations, the multinationals, against biodiversity, changing our environment in a way that was perceived not to be sustainable. So, their storyline was that the science that we claimed to ask for innovation and modernization was flawed. That it was only driving profits of companies, but that it was not environmentally sustainable and that it was not in the interest of food safety. Now the drama unfolds. Like in any good story, there's a drama behind this. As many of you know, we had a relatively small incident of bee losses in a, a small region of Germany, which was due to an unprofessional application of a seed treatment product, in this case of a neonic seed treatment product. And subsequently there were restrictions in some member states, and that also led to some restrictions of the movement of the products of our seed in the common market. And that issue, of course, was being picked up by many. And as a good director, you say, action. That's what we did. 
we became active. And quite typical for our industry, we see a technical problem and we address it with a technical solution. In Europe, we developed a European seat treatment quality assurance scheme called ESTA with a beautiful logo in the cooperation of the different industries involved. And we saw that was indeed the solution to the problem. But there were directors who called cut. This is a principal problem. It's not a technical one. So we need to give a principal answer. That was their answer to this issue. And coming back on what I said earlier, indeed, the criticism was that the science behind also our technical solution was not correct. It cannot be trusted because it's based on industry input, on data that was supplied by industry for the authorization of their products. So alternatives are needed. Independent science is needed. And in case of doubt, you use the precautionary principle. Safety first, which basically means you don't touch anything that has any risk. If we would have done that as human beings, as you have heard earlier, very likely nobody would ever have put a little bit of seed in the ground. In any good story, you need some actors, you need characters. Now, the first character is us and our colleagues from the crop protection industry. But the problem is we are the villains. We are the bad guys. We are seen as the agro industry. That was a popular term for many of us. But society doesn't like to link agriculture and industry. That combination, agro-industry, is not how they want to perceive agriculture. But then, of course, when you have a bad guy, you need a good guy. And here we have them, the white knights, the NGOs, independent people, striving for the better of everybody, composing different groups, beekeepers, conservation groups, biodiversity activists. And they are non-profit activists. We are profit activists. And then, of course, there is the lady to be saved, like in any good play. The sleeping princess, that's society. And that society usually is, in our modern days, represented by somebody. It's usually politicians and it's administrators. So, we need to save the consumer, the sleeping princess, as I call her, and it is the politicians and the administrators' job to do that. Inevitably, in such a storyline, you can't have a happy end for us, but maybe a happy end from the point of view of others. Just three days ago, the European Commission adopted a wide-scale restriction of the use of three neonicotinoids, and specifically their use as seed treatments. Now, in some stories you could say, this is the end. But there is a future. We need to continue to defend seed treatment. And there are some lessons that we can learn from the past year in Europe. And that may be also are lessons to be learned for all of us. This drama established a very strong alliance between the seed, the crop protection industry, our service providers in the seed treatment business, but also with farmers and many other actors. And it was built and is built on trust which is very important for our future cooperation. We were able to concrete actions together. And we were able to demonstrate what is actually the value behind technology, in this case the neonic technology, for the immediate user, but also for the wider public. And that was done by the so-called Project Compass. It's a very fitting name because it was supposed to provide a compass to decision-makers 
It was supposed to provide directions for decision makers in order to make an informed choice. This project compass will be presented to you in much more detail over the coming days, and I'm sure you'll find it an interesting and a fascinating story. I think it built a very strong case. It was a full-scale socio-economic impact assessment based on a very well-established and approved model. And it was indeed, it was done by an independent body of scientists, respected internationally. And the results were striking, even for us, for ourselves, for the owners of the technologies. The effects of this ban will be dramatic, and they go well beyond what we had originally foreseen. Seed treatment technology is a game changer in many parts of agriculture. It is not only a small improvement, but it makes things possible that otherwise are no longer possible. Billions of euros will be lost in Europe, and there will be even negative economic and environmental impacts from this restriction. Some stories, usually only the good ones, have a sequel. But in this case, I hope that even a story with a not very happy end for us will have a sequel, and I'm sure there will be sequels. On the one hand, the NGOs have already set their sights on further seed treatment products, but also, and that is important for all of us to understand, on technology in farming in general. That is the core of the criticism, the combination of technology and agriculture. So, the defense of such technologies, that is the core, that needs to become the key task for any agricultural input association, like ISF and many others. I think the socio-economic impact assessment that the Project Compass provided indeed delivered very crucial, very important information and it brought in other stakeholders, so not only the immediately touched industries, but also many of those that didn't actually realize that they would be impacted by such restrictions. But, and that is I think an important lesson to be learned, such economic assessments need to be balanced. We heard about the balance, about the fragile balance. They need to be balanced also by demonstrating using similar concepts, environmental benefits of our technologies, societal benefits. That is what the society cares about. Not only the benefit for productivity, for growth, for jobs in our sector, but what is in it for me as a consumer, I think you can say, is a valid question. And we need to answer this question both in the seed and in the seed technology industry. So, to receive the necessary support, the seed sector needs to address both economics and emotions. We need to be sure that we balance these two elements in the perception of society of what we can contribute to the future of these societies. It is not only about growth, it is also about societal benefit. The storyline could end with, let's do what we always do in the seed industry. Let's make things grow more and better. Thank you for your attention. We need to thank both Mr. Paisius and Mr. von Essen for his exceptionally they're exceptionally interesting speeches. And it's now time for another appearance of the Dora Stratton Dance Theater presenting.